All right. Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is Anna's Thoughts and Musical Parodies, and this is my home screen on my computer. I am using a brand new screen recorder that I just found. Um, and I decided to make a video because I found out something that is disturbing to me about someone who I actually went to high school with. Uh, her name's Ali, Kasa Ali Kasaza. She runs a uh, business both online and in person. She does speaking engagements and things like that. Um, overall, I think she's an amazing person. I love her passion for what she does. Um, she talks about motherhood and simplifying your life and all kinds of things like that. At the top here, you can see uh, it says they help you simplify everything from home to schedule to business. A lot of what she does is really, really cool. But um, I was actually looking her up today because I wanted to follow her with uh, a profile that I started on Instagram um, about my product lines. And I wanted to follow her, follow her with that. And then I saw that she has a uh, BLM uh thing on her Instagram page. I forget what these are called, uh, highlights. And so I just I clicked on that because I was like, oh crap. <laughs> and here, let's get to the beginning of it. Uh, there's this, how to be a better white person. And of course, that triggered me. You know, it's obviously racist. And then I found out a little while ago, not very long ago, that it was actually uh, an episode that she did of her podcast. Here it is right here. Um, I've listened to about close to 15 minutes of it. And I know that she has good intentions. Um, she's trying to make a positive difference in the world. I respect that, but it's really a lot of self-flagellation. Um, a lot of saying that it's our responsibility as white people to end racism, which is absolutely insane because everybody can be racist. Everybody, everybody is not racist, but people of all races are racist. You know, there's racist people in every race. So I think it's maybe even satanic, uh, you know, to, it's divisive, but, you know, Satan twists reality and twists truth to make it look good. You know, like a wolf in sheep's clothing, an angel of light. The Bible says that in the end times, there will be false prophets and false teachers. This woman apparently speaks in churches. So it's infiltrating the church. Um, yeah, like the um, United States used to be racist. We used to have systemic racism. We used to have slavery and all of that. But, you know, thank God that has ended. Obviously, there are still racist people here, but of every race. So this is just very disturbing to me. And so I also found another slide over here uh, that I wanted to just talk about. Uh, here, pausing it. Um, syst systematic racism exists on every level of society. I thought it was going to stay paused. Um, okay, so let's just talk about this. This is kind of just a thought I could pause this. It's kind of, all right, well, I have it. I took a picture of it. This is kind of just a, uh, first draft um, sorry, my computer fan keeps acting up. It's kind of disturbing. But, all right, so the first thing on that little slide says black graduates are two times more likely to be unemployed. So I have actually heard something about this before, um, about whether or not there is discrimina discrimination um, against, you know, if there's racial discrimination in employment that happens. And it was actually Lauren Chen, who I heard about this from a while back, 
Um, and she was talking about, she's looked at all these studies and it actually has to do with names. If somebody sees a last name that sounds questionable to them, like, I don't know, or, or, or a first name, you know, something like La Fonda, <laughs> for example, or something like Betty Lou, you know, if it sounds like white trash or if it sounds like somebody who would have come from the hood, you know, um, they're going to be less likely to hire that person regardless of race. Um, I'm trying to see if I can find something about that uh, here. Here we go. Uh, or what you can do. Here's why you didn't get that job. Your name. Let's see what this says. This is World Economic Forum. But my point is that it's more like economic. It's about, you know, what kind of upbringing you probably had, what kind of personality you might have based on people who have those types of names, what they tend to be like. Let's see. After spending hours trawling through job, list job listings, you finally come across the perfect role. A week goes by. Then a This happened to me recently. They probably found someone even more qualified for the position you tell yourself, but then it happens again. You go over your resume with a fine tooth comb. It turns out there could be something far more personal getting in the way. Your name. Let's, let's see what, what year this article was written. 2017, so not too long ago. Uh, according to researchers at Ryerson University and the University of Toronto, as part of a different study from 2011, researchers sent out almost 13,000 fake resumes. Yeah, I think this is what uh, Lauren Chen was talking about. To over 3,000 job postings. The academics went back to this data at the start of 2017 and found that people with Chinese, Indian, or Pakistani sounding names. Wow, okay. So it's not even black people. We're 28% less likely to get invited to an interview than the fictitious candidates with English sounding names, even when their qualifications were the same. If they had an Asian sounding name, they were, but we, they were between, or employers were between 35% and 60% less likely to call the candidate. Let's uh, look, search and for black. I don't even see that in here. Um, African American. Okay, let's see. For example, okay, the study drew on data from job listings in Canada, but this problem is by no means limited to one country. For example, a smaller study commissioned by the French government last year found that employers were less likely to interview candidates with North African sounding names. Women who whitened their name or made them sound more British had to send only half as many applications. Okay, so this article seems does seem to be saying that if you're anything other than white, you're not going to get hired. You're not going to be as likely. We are not claiming that employers engage in discriminatory behavior consciously. Or that this is necessarily an issue of racism, explains Marianne Bertrand, a researcher who worked on yet another study revealing bias in hiring. It is important to teach people in charge of hiring about the subconscious biases that they have. Um, let's see what this is. I mean, I don't think it makes sense necessarily to not even interview somebody just because their name sounds like you know, they might not be a responsible person or something. You never know. If they have good qualifications, I think you should give them a chance. A new study finds French job applicants with foreign sounding names are much less likely to get callbacks from recruiters. Foreign, okay, white sounding names preferred in America. 
We're not claiming that employers engage in discriminatory behavior consciously or that this is necessarily an issue of racism. Once again, it is important to teach people. In, okay, I guess that's what we read in the other one. The BBC came under fire for not hiring staff of black and minority ethnic origins. Um, let's search, let's search, uh, name discrimination, discrimination, in hiring statistics. See what we can find there. Huff, Huff Post, you're not going to look at that. That's obviously biased. I don't know what NBER is. PolitiFacts. <laughs> of course, those are the first things that come up. Um, New York Times, like I don't trust any of these sources. DGMS Law. Maybe this will be a little bit less biased. I don't know what it is. But, okay, never mind. This is just recourse. Oh, wait. Statistics you need to know. Okay, so this is all kind of, all of these are giving the same idea. And I know sometimes that is true. You know, that it's people who have names like LaFonda or Ray Ray, you know. But I, I know I have heard that it happens. 67% of whites... Okay, so they have never. I thought I was going to say that they had. But, you know, this if this is self-reporting... You can't necessarily trust that. I know that I have heard that people with names like, you know, that sound white trash also get discriminated against. And that makes sense to me because, okay, I just realized it also has to do with white sounding. Okay. So I, it sounds like people of other races besides white do get hired if they their name sounds what what these sources are calling white sounding but who is to really determine what that means i think it has to do with if the it name sounds like somebody in you know higher class society made the name more so than anything else Let's see. Um, white trash <laughs> name discrimination in employment. I don't know how to word it. Reverse racism. Uh, a study claiming re resumes at oh, Reddit. I don't know. So you can get the wrong, you can get the wrong idea about reality if you don't look past the mainstream. You know, I learned that at the beginning of President Trump's election. Let's see what the, oh wait, I'm curious about this right here. It's just a blog, but let's just see. I listened to the audiobook on a popular app called Overdrive. Thank you. White Trash chronicles the past 400 years and, and uncovers a little told history of oppression, enslavement, death, and segregation that the white trash of our society have faced. Interesting. Um, let's just search on here. 
for work, uh, let's see, employment. Huh. See how hard it is to find? Like, I know I've heard about this, and I can't freaking find it anywhere. Discrimination. Okay, the first thing Eisenberg does well is not isolating the experience of discrimination to poor whites. She is quick and eager to point out the discrimination that others have faced. Exactly. She like I'm not saying that non-white people don't get discriminated against. Everybody does. She does not shy away from the travesty that was the slave trade and the way blacks have been historically mistreated in the U.S. She doesn't hold back from discussing the wrongs that immigrants have faced. She uses these negative experiences, however, to artfully cast a pall over the poor white experience in America's history. Londoners were paid to round up poor children and orphans on the streets of London. They were shipped off to the New World to be sold as cheap labor. We often hear about indentured servants, but Eisenberg exposes us to some of the less savory bits of servitude. So that'd be interesting to learn about. But... I don't know. I've... I've had a lot of different jobs in my day living in Southern California and you know I've worked with a lot of black people. I've seen plenty of black people who are in better positions than me. I mean hello Oprah. Hello uh, what's it called? Um, sports stars, NBA players who get paid exorbitant amounts of money to throw a ball around. Hello, rappers. Hello, Beyonce. You know, come on. Hello, Obama. Discrimination, employment, white trash, name, Employers replies to racial names. NPR. Interesting. I don't really know what they are like. I think they're kind of liberal. Why? Okay, what year is this? 2018. Why is it still okay to trash poor white people? You can get away with calling something white trash in polite company. Yeah, that's weird on cable television and in the headline of a magazine article. An article in The New Republic once posed the question of whether President Trump might be a white trash icon. Oh, well. For some reason, the term manages to come across as less offensive than most other... Yeah, see? So NPR, maybe they're decent. Yet white trash could be called the Swiss Army knife of insults. Okay. Maybe not. It's deft in its ability to demean multiple groups at once. White people and people of... What? And people of color? What? Poor people and people who act like poor people. Yeah, see, that's kind of the point I'm getting at. Rural, rural folks and religious folks and anyone without a college degree. Yeah, see, this is what I'm trying to say. This paragraph right here, I feel like those are the kind of people... That I've definitely heard that there are studies about um, that tend to not get called for interviews because they just assume that they're going to have a lifestyle that they don't want in their workplace. And yeah, that's wrong. I don't think it's all about race, but you know, maybe sometimes. Why does white trash still get thrown around without much pushback? Again. Typically, the term is directed at low-income rural white people, and while there were more than 17 million white people living in poverty as of 2016, it's still rare that you see poor white people represented, represented in government or media. Let's see, search on here for... Employment, uh, hiring, jobs. I know this is real.
employment statistics. Wait, statistics USA. Okay, here, let's try this. None of this was planned out, if you couldn't tell. I'm just going off the cuff here. <laughs> I think you could probably tell. Um, data tools. Data finder. Um, employment by name. Hmm. I'm not sure what to type in to find what I'm looking for. Public subjects. Unemployment research. Let's try that so we can see. Okay, wait. Earnings. Because mm. one of the things on the list that I, I was originally talking about is it says the wealth gap. The net worth of a typical white family is nearly 10 times greater than that of a black family. First of all, not definitely not mine. Um, but let's just check that out. So the most recent women's, why just women's? Okay, well, I guess that's a whole section. Okay, by age race. I'll just back check this if we, if this is real. Uh, So, white people, 16 years and over, numbers of workers in thousands. Not sure how this works. I guess maybe we can compare. And then black. Okay, let's see. Retrieve data. Okay, so this is the white right here, and this okay, black down here. So twenty, this start with twenty nineteen, right here. Eighty nine thousand one hundred eighty three total white people, sixteen or over, working. And wow, it's a pretty huge difference. Fifteen thousand two hundred and thirty one. Oh, okay, this is earnings. Weekly and hour, I thought it was the amount of people working. Weekly and hourly earnings data. So that is interesting. 89,000 compared to 15,000. Wow. So 15, 30, 45, 60, 75. That's about six times higher, not 10 times. So that's a big difference. But another thought I have about that is the fact of the Democratic plantation and how much, you know, Democrats pander to black people, telling them, you know, you can just be on benefits. You don't have, I've, I've actually been, it's been suggested to me before by people I was talking to about like benefits or something that I could just, you know, work less hours and qualify for Medi-Cal or something like that. And I know I've heard black people talk about that being offered to them also. And, you know, they're targeted for that. So I think that's a big part of that. You know, they're encouraged to live off of the system. 
So that's something to put into consideration, which is pretty depressing. You know, and that is racism because it's, you know, the white people in government and the uh, white liberals trying to hold down black people, be in control. But as far as people being unemployed, yeah, it's hard to find the evidence that I know I've heard about. <laughs> about, you know, people with white trash sounding names. But that one article from NPR was pretty interesting. So we talked about the wealth gap. Black Americans are more, are 30% more likely to be pulled over. Um, I'm not entirely sure how to look that up, but I mean, just my personal theory on that. Um, I feel like it's a vicious cycle that starts in the home just based off of a lot of stuff that I've heard from various, you know, black people and maybe other people too. Um, that, I mean, I've seen commercials about it where the parents are warning the kids that they have to be extra careful around police. And then they have it in their mind that the police are their enemy. And then of course, when they grow up, they're going to get bitter and they're going to get angry. It's just common sense. And then they, act out when they get pulled over. So that actually relates more to arrests, which is also on the list. More than 60% of people in prison are people of color. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that's true. And that has to do with what I said. But I mean, I think the, the getting pulled over would relate to that because it's like a vicious cycle of, you know, the police thinking, you know, these are the people who tend to go to jail the most often, so we should be on the lookout for them because, you know, there's reason to believe that they're more likely to be doing crimes or whatever. I don't know how good of a thought process that is, but that's just my theory on what might be happening. I'm not 100% sure. But... Let's see. I've looked at this before. Um, curse. I don't know how to spell this. Let me just get the facts on that. If we can find it. What is this? Round table report. No, I want like the, the charts. Resources. Mm. Okay, here we go. Statistics. Alcohol, okay. Bureau of Justice, Statistics, Data and Product Finder. Violent victimization. I don't know if that means that these people listed here are victimizing other people or if they were victims, but let's see, prisoners in 2019. So just to check on what this little thing that I saw says about black Americans or wait, more than 60% of people in prison are people of color. They also don't clarify what they mean. I mean, <laughs> I think white people are kind of, that's a color too, right? Uh, prisoners under jurisdiction. Of state by by sex. Oh, where's race? I found this piece. Okay, here we go. All right, two twenty nineteen for the most recent. Black four hundred. 
That is not that much more, actually. 452,800 compared to white, 422. That's only 30,000 more. I actually thought it was more different than that. So this is incorrect. She posted this actually about a year ago, but for, okay, so, but still, it really wasn't that big of a difference. Okay, so they're saying 60% of all people. Okay, so what? We, let's take out the calculator. This is kind of fun. I took statistics in college for one semester. I actually really enjoyed it. It's kind of uh, difficult. I got a B. But let's see. I thought it was interesting. Okay, so... Oh, right here. I didn't even have to add it all together. I always do that. I make it harder than it has to be. Okay, so... One million, gosh, so many people in prison. One million, three hundred eighty thousand, four hundred twenty-seven thousand, four hundred twenty-seven total people in prison in 2019. Divided by, oh wait, actually, so the way we do this is, it's been a little while since I've done math. Start with the amount of black people, 452,800 to get the percentage of how many total people in prison, divide by total number of people, 1,380,427. So rounded it up, it'd be 33%. So that's, that's false. It's absolutely false. According to the DOJ statistics. So, wow. That's literally, literally doubled. Unless they're talking about Hispanic people also, because they did not clarify. But I mean, it was about white privilege, which is usually, you know, it's in a BLM thing. Well, let's just see. Okay, so we're going to add up the black and the Hispanic for all people of color, which is not, it's more than that, but anyway. Um, so, 452,800 plus 320,700 for Hispanic equals a total of 773,500, okay, divided by the total number of people in prison, 1,003,080. 427, 56. Okay, so I guess they rounded up and they're including both. And maybe they would have been doing that for, since it was made in 2019, maybe they were doing that for, I mean, I don't know when this little infographic was made, but as of last year, it was a little bit less than 60% are people of color. They so rounded up. All right, but uh, like I said, I think that has to do with just this whole us versus them mentality that the parents are, and the media, are perpetuating. I mean, I don't even have first a lot of first-hand knowledge that literal parents are actually doing this. I honestly see it more so on the media. So I do have uh, black friends, though, who have told me that this is what they believe. You know, they grew up in uh, what you might call ghetto areas like I have. You know, I've seen a lot of crime in the areas where there was mostly what um, Hispanic people. There was tons of crime. I think it's just the whole us versus them mentality just held on in people's minds and hearts through the generations. And that's what needs to end. We just need to know that we are all equal as human beings created by God. And we need to stop, you know, I don't know, maybe we thrive off of the thrill of, you know, having drama between the races. I mean, I'll be honest, sometimes I think, you know, I kind of thrive off of various types of drama. Uh, I have ADHD, that might be part of it, but I mean, I know it's not super healthy and I don't want to perpetuate it. So, 
interesting. All right, so the other two things on the infographic, let's go back to it over here. Uh, five in 10 black children live in poverty. And then it goes back to the whole jobs thing. Um, black women are four times more likely to die during childbirth. I would have to look into that. I'm not really sure why that is. You know, it could just be because of poverty. You know, like they don't have as good of health care where they live. You know, I've had to go to hospitals where it's pretty crappy because I had Medi-Cal or whatever. Um, and it just also makes me think about the fact that Planned Parenthood is pushed on black people because there is systemic racism, but it's not on the right. <laughs> it's on the left. I don't believe in killing your children in the womb. <sighs> yeah, I mean... For me, this just all boils down to the Democrat plantation. So that's kind of my take my general takeaway is just that um, that probably is a big part of what has created the us versus them mentality that causes this to be continually perpetuated. So we just need to just move on, forget about the past. I mean, not forget about the past, but don't focus on it so much. You know, don't just you know, live your life focused on race, on uh, slavery and Jim Crow laws because those are, thank God, in the past, you know, like, and a lot of these people who were killed by the police, you know, the stories are very different from what the mainstream would have you believe. So, yeah, I guess that's just my general takeaway. This was pretty interesting. Thanks for watching. If you would like to support what I do here, you can check out the links that will be in my description for the Patreon, PayPal donations, and my merchandise store. Have a wonderful night, afternoon, morning, evening, and I'll see you next time. Bye.